welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus chapter 32, and today I'm going to read verses 15 and 16, and then a brief reaction. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, tablets which were written on both sides. They were written on one side and the other. The tablets were God's work, and the writing was God's writing engraved on the tablets. Okay, so Moses and God have inter gone into kind of a dialogue and intercession here. Moses, God said, I'm going to destroy them. Moses said, please don't. Here's the reasons why. We've already talked on that. And then God relented in the previous verse 14. He says, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to destroy them. Here we have then now what's happened is these last five or six chapters, Moses has been receiving God's instruction, the Ten Commandments written on the two tablets, front and back. And he comes, going to come down the mountain now, and we're coming up. He's going to discover the people that have corrupted themselves there uh, doing the gold calf thing. So that's this chapter, the golden calf. So anyway, here we have just this sex segment. Mo Moses is coming down. He's got the two tablets, the covenant. This is the tremendous agreement that's been prepared that God has proposed, that they've agreed to. And he's got them. He's coming down the mountain with these uh, tablets. You could only imagine how it might feel to Moses. He's coming down out of God's holy and pure presence. He's been in it for, I guess, 40 days or so. He's coming down from that into this. He's coming into the camp where the people are having a big party and dancing and there's lots of singing and all this we're going to find. Uh, he's going from complete purity to to raucous, disastrous party time, uh, ridiculous sin. And so that would have to be a very jarring piece for him. Notice here again, when we come to the Ten Commandments, it's not like that nine of the commandments were written with God's finger and one of the commandments was written with human finger. The whole ten were written by God's finger. So you have everything from thou shalt have no other gods before me all the way through to the Tenth Commandment. And then there is included in there is the Seventh Day Sabbath. We've already seen it in the previously in chapter uh, 31. Suddenly in the middle of Exodus, there's this re-emphasis on the, t the Sabbath commandment. Very interesting, and we talked about that already at some, some length. But here we have, again, the tablets, and I'm just pointing out that this is God's handwriting. This is God's law. This is God's character kind of uh, putting into a thumbnail sketch pattern, and we have the Ten Commandments, the short version, kind of the, the graspable piece. So Moses is coming, and he's got both tablets, with God's character written on them. The Ten Commandments is kind of God's character adapted to the human situation. And so he, this is the agreement that's been made. God is unchanging. And so, you know, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here he comes. And uh, the people, though, are very changeable. So let me just point out one other piece, and that is that this is God's work. That's what it says at verse 15 and 16. 16, the tablets were God's work. A lot of people are very quick, have you noticed, to throw aside the Ten Commandments. Oh, that was for this dispensation or for that dispensation, or we keep nine of these ten. Uh, this one was just for the Jews, and, and we're, you know, we're shifting and sorting and sort of selectively saying, I'm going to keep number number three, I'm going to keep number you know, seven and eight. This is ten, this is one unity. It's all one piece. You can't take part of it. You can't take part of you know, can't take God's mercy and keep it and take his wrath against sin and throw it away. You've got to keep it all together there. So anyway, when it says this is God's work, I think it, it's a call to you and to I to take very seriously yet again the fact that God is unselfishness personified. He That's what, who he is, what he is as a being. And the Ten Commandments, rather than being some disastrous thing, are a very good thing. His commandments, John says in the New Testament, are not grievous. And so there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. There's everything right about the Ten Commandments. And uh, we need to take all ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, all with, with the utmost um, interest and agreement and uh, completely uh, be in agreement with all of that and live by that. Anything less than that isn't really going to be truly following God. It'll be a selective following. So let's follow God completely. And uh, Moses is coming down. He's got the tablets. Let's see what happens next tomorrow morning. See you then.